Uh, Marcus, how has your season been so far? So obviously you got drafted last season. Yep. Last season. Um, so it's your first year. How are you finding the AFL system? Uh, yeah, it was it was a bit of a weird start for me. I didn't have much of a preseason. Um, I had a bad back and was all, almost certainly going to have surgery on it. But um, somehow, yeah, got past that and um, jumped into the year. And I wasn't like, I didn't have... Um, yeah, I wasn't. I didn't think I was going to play much AFL footy. I was kind of focused on having a good year at VFL and um, played a couple of games with the Sandy Zebras, and then um, yeah, got the call up round four against Hawks. And yeah, I just sort of said like, um, yeah, I could make a big thing out of this, and I'm going to keep playing. So yeah, it was it was a good good start for when I when I joined um, the senior squad, and we won a few games in a row. But then it's been a it's been a little bit tough the last couple of weeks, but we think there's still a bit to give. So, yeah. How'd that contrast go from um, obviously a new kid on the block and going from VFL to AFL footy so quickly? Was that as challenging as what it sounds or was it almost like you go to AFL and there's so many quality footballers around you yeah. that maybe it didn't feel as difficult as what it seems? Yeah, it's a bit of both. Like um, on, on one side, like you got so many quality footballers, as you said, and um, the skill level's so high that, the ball can get to you so quickly, but I feel like on the other end of it, you and you're on defense, and you don't think a play can get it. The ball almost always end up there. Yeah, and yeah. you're just you're just running, and you're like, yeah, that's yeah, my yeah. fault. You've been in elite sporting organizations for a long, long time throughout your junior years, which we'll touch on soon. But do you think the Next Gen Academy helped you transition into this season? Yeah, so you were yeah. with the Saints for how many years before you got drafted? Uh, I'd say two years, um, and. Now that I look back on it, and one of my best mates, Mitch Owens, who was also in the same program, um, yeah, we both say that, like, having been a part of the next gen and being able to train with the Saints when, before we got drafted, we knew the whole club, um, like we'd been there before, so we knew where everything was, and we'd met a couple of the guys, so, well, pretty much everyone, mm-hmm. so made it made it a lot easier um, to mingle in with a few of the boys, and uh, yeah, and uh, I think the next generation takes a some of like the AFL um, training standards down to that program. So yeah, you get a feel and it, yeah, it's helped. Well, awesome. you have slotted into the AFL system and St Kilda pretty seamlessly yeah. and you've become a bit of a fan favorite. The Saints supporters are really backing you and getting behind you. I don't know if you, I know footballers always say they're not big on social media. They, they tend not to check it. But on all of the St Kilda fan pages and Facebook posts and Instagram posts, you are getting a lot of love, Marcus Win Hager. Do you feel that? Do you feel that coming to you or do you not say it? Uh, yeah, look, I think it's a bit of a lie when people say they don't look at that stuff. <laughs> but, um, yeah, like I, f- I guess I feel it. Um, and it's it's a good feeling. Like um, just makes you want to keep playing better footy. Uh, but, yeah. Yeah, it's it's something you don't want to get too caught up on. Um, and mm. but yeah, uh, at the end of the day, it's quite quite appreciative of it. You become well known for your tagging ability. How have you settled into that role this season? Uh yeah, something new, something I've never done. But um, uh, the first one, first game was the West Coast game, and it was all all new. And uh, <laughs> I gave it a go at training <laughs> that week. Yeah, one of the coaches just said, "I want you to run with him, tag along with Seb Ross." And then I was like, oh, I might might do this this week. And um, <laughs> yeah, so I've just jumped in and I, I got onto a phone with one of the development coaches, um, Ben Jacobs, who used to tag at North Melbourne and was pretty bloody good at it. Yeah. yeah. So just gave me a few pointers and went through some vision. And yeah, now it's sort of a role, I guess. And it's something I enjoy and I think it's really good for me at this age. But um. Yeah, it's it's definitely challenging and it has its um, <laughs> challenges uh, being so switched on all the time and having to follow someone and getting a bit of attention from the other team because they're trying to get stuck in here. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it definitely helps when you have teammates that are getting stuck into the player that you're tagging. So when you line up on, say, Tim Kelly, for instance, <laughs> is it daunting and is it like overwhelming going like, this is one of the best midfielders in yeah. the entire country. Yeah. His pace, his explosiveness, his fitness, he's a seasoned veteran and I've got to try and limit him and sort of match all his assets as well. Is that sort of like, how, how do you go into that? That uh, The warm-ups, I was, I was pretty nervous. Yeah. Um, that over at uh, WA... At Optus Stadium, um, 
yeah, that warm up was probably uh, like was pretty nervous. Were you looking over at him, going, "Oh, how's he moving?" <laughs> how's uh, he yeah, like a few of the boys were like a um, bit of shits and giggles. Like before, they're like, "Oh, there's Kelly." Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Go over at the warm up and just get an arm yeah, across. Yeah. Would he have had any idea that you were going to tag him? Do you know I if they get wind of that or they just? I don't reckon. Have had a clue? Not, no. not not that game. So yeah. when you went over, he's probably like, "Oh, great, not getting yeah. tagged." Yeah, <laughs> like because I I'd have been playing midfield. Um, for like 10 weeks before that. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it was, it was weird. I, I don't think they would have known. Um, yeah. But yeah. And, and then you get, you go in them and you're st- uh, next to him, you're standing side by side and then he would probably start to switch I, for him. I reckon that he goes, oh, I'm getting tagged today. I think he would have had a pretty quick idea. When yeah. I was just <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then how does he respond to that? Do you notice him like getting into you? How, how does the whole team respond to, to the tag? Yeah. So, um, I reckon their teammates get wind of it pretty quickly. Yeah, I got a few whacks to the stomach. <laughs> but um, yeah, like they and start. Jacobs get- didn't tell me about the whacks yeah. to the stomach. <laughs> Bloody hell! Yeah, but they um they start getting stuck into you. Um, they'll try find you for like a bump when you're running. Like in general play, they'll they'll try find you and give you a little bump along the way. And at stoppages, they'll try check you. Yeah, but um, yeah, it's it's full on. Um, and you've got them coming after you for pretty much the whole game. So, Do you find um, this tagging role to be a little stepping stone in developing your midfield craft? So like, you know, for the first couple of seasons, maybe you follow around some of the best mids in the comp and then by season three, you're now like, you know, the patterns and you know how to be one of the better midfield. So is this like a stepping stone for yourself? Yeah, hundred percent. And Steely, um, he did it for his first couple of seasons at Saints and few of the boys have said that's what, that's what's help him, helped him. So um, I guess uh, like following these guys that I'm tagging, they're elite midfielders and some of the best at, in the game right now. So um, I guess it sort of helps me find their patterns, like f- see what they do, um, their contest work. And in a sense, it's it's sort of taking me to the ball. So mm. um, I don't want to get so caught up on just tagging them the whole time, but like being – being around the ball, it, it almost helps my game and it has I have a focus the whole time, so I'm pretty much switched on mm. the whole time and I find that easy. Easier just to play footy. Like if I'm focused on a role, then I think everything else will come. Rog, we're led to believe that fateful day over at Optus Stadium, Tim Kelly only got off the chain and he only got was it four or five touches? So talk about taking a scalp, our great man. Yeah, inside the four walls of the St Kilda Football Club, uh, how celebrated was that? Keeping him to four touches, one of the league's most silky and best accumulators in the whole competition. Yeah. Keeping him four touches, quite the achievement. Does that get celebrated as much as a Max King who kicks four or five sausage rolls? Uh, yeah, yeah. the boys got around me. Um, each quarter, our, our line coach, Benny McGlynn, come down and say how many touches he got and um yeah the boys were were quite happy to hear about that and um at the end of the game when I heard it was four I was almost like oh bullshit like, yeah, yeah. yeah um I, I didn't believe it but champion dad is absolutely butchered this <laughs> surely three it, votes it's gotta be 24 game. surely Can the umpires are aware of what's happening there and they can give Marcus Winhager the three votes absolutely not but I think <laughs> best and fairest awards yeah you would be right up there on a game like that yeah so it, yeah it was weird um after the game, like they brought it up, and um, yeah, and throughout the game, they all the boys were talking about it on the field and made a bit of a laugh about That's it. That's great, yeah. It's awesome. So, yeah, it, and I think that that actually helps as well um, when you got your teammates, not not necessarily like talking and getting stuck into him, but like just laying an extra tackle or mm. giving yep. an extra bump, like that goes a long way.